Jesus and Moses one day go golfing. Jesus is golfing and Moses is his caddy. They get to a part on the course where there's a pond he's got to get over and he says, Moses, give me the three iron. And Moses looks at the situation and says, I don't know, Jesus. I don't know if you can get over the pond with that. And he says, well, I'll be fine. Just give me the three iron. And so Jesus hits it and he goes right into the pond. So Moses parts the water and goes and gets the ball and brings it back to him. All right, Moses, give me that three iron, he says. Jesus, I don't think you can get it over the pond with that three iron. You just now didn't do it. And he says, I've seen Arnold Palmer make this shot with a three iron. And if Arnold Palmer can do it, I can do it. Give me the three iron. And so he gives him the three iron and uh, Jesus swings his club. And once again, puts it right in the drink. Go get the ball, Moses. Moses said and spreads the water, parts the pond and brings back the ball. Third time. Moses, how about that three iron? And Moses says, you're just not gonna be able to make it over that pond with that three iron, Jesus. And Jesus again says, I saw Arnold Palmer make this shot with a three iron. And if Arnold Palmer can do it, I can do it. So Moses says, all right, well, look, I'll give you the three iron. But this time, if it goes in the pond, I'm not going to get it. Jesus said, you know what? Arnold Palmer can do it. I can do it. Just give me the ball. I'll go get it. If it, It's not going to happen. And he takes it and he hits it. And for the third time, boop right into the par. And so Jesus goes, starts going for the ball and walking on top of the water to go get it. And these other golfers come by and they see that. And they're absolutely amazed. And they look over at Moses and they say, who's that guy walking across the top of the water like that? Who's he think he is, Jesus Christ? And Moses turns to him and says, no, he thinks he's Arnold Palmer. Hey everybody, Jamie here from the Enigmatic Nomadics YouTube channel. We're right here at almost the golden hour. And in this case, we didn't start shooting right now in order to make the lighting better. But instead, I'm trying to find the sun. To see if I can get these things installed by dark. And so it's going to be a race uh, with the sun to get these lights installed on the Yukon. Let's get this show on the road. So this is pretty basic wiring for folks that have seen wiring before on a harness like this. What we've got is a relay and a rocker switch that turns the lights off and on. So there's a lot of juice going to these lights to make them so bright and that's amps and the switch we could overbuild that switch and make it so strong that you could pass all those amps through the switch itself if you wanted to but the elegant way to do it would be to add a relay and what a relay does is the switch tells the relay to let the power through without having the power having to pass through the switch itself so don't let a, the fact that you see a relay on uh, schematics like this confuse you that's all it does is it's just kind of says hey they want their power now because it's small and it can't really take a lot of juice <clears throat> that's a long way to go to say we have a relay right i want you guys to know everything i don't want there to be mystery there's no mystery just some good lights just gonna install some good lights so i stretch this out and i've got my relay in the middle of the harness so that it's gonna get mounted inside the engine compartment and we've got a red and black Red we know is positive on 12 volt. Black we know is negative on 12 volt. In this case, we can go straight to the battery, which is 
optimal, or we could just go to the frame, someplace close on the frame, because the entire frame of vehicles is ground or negative charge. Got two plugs here. One of them has red and black wires, and one of them has a sheath over red and black wires. What's the difference? They just gave you a, a coating over this to hold the wires and keep them from getting damaged. That's all they did that for. So it's the same ones. And if we switch them, lights don't know the difference. They're not going to blink in a certain order or anything. So they're either going to be light or they're not going to be light. So it doesn't matter where we put them. We've got little sockets here. So I'm going to put one in there. And I'm going to put one in here. I'm just going to put these on the battery without clamping them on or screwing them on because I just want to prove that they have power now, but here's our switch and there's our light. So we know everything's good to go. This is so simple. This is so simple. Sometimes we like to just hear wiring or hear harness or hear fuse or relay and think, Oh my gosh, you can't shock yourself. It's 12 volt. It's DC. So there's no concern with that. And I'm not going to put mine directly on the battery because of the way that this battery is connected here. It's got the side uh, connections. And so instead I'm going to pick up my, I'll show you here. I'm going to pick up my positive right right down here. So I know that I can pick up power here and then I just need to get ground and I could get ground right here because it's part of the frame like we talked about. So there's my positive and negative. I just need to make sure that my wires aren't gonna get over into the fan or any of the moving parts. See all these screws right here? They gave you Allen wrenches to size them up so you don't have to have a set on you. You back all these off and you put it right on the lip. So like right here, and then you spin this around and you do something with the wiring that makes it so it doesn't get pinched off when you close it. But that's easy to figure out. You probably just put it on the on this side of it with a zip tie or something and you're good to go. I'll close it and see what the mechanics are like here to make sure I'm good on that. But it's so simple. So all I really need to do is come through with the, the toggle switch. And I don't know if I can't just come through can you see where I'm at? I don't know if I can just come through right there. Right there. So I may not even have to go through the firewall. Running the part of the wiring with the toggle switch on it to the inside, I'm gonna use this, this is called a fishing rod. And I just found a spot right there at the door jam. A couple of things I wanna point out here. The uh, designers that engineered this gave you a little plate so that when you put these screws in to tighten it up against the hood, it doesn't create uh, a rust point potentially. It was just kind of nice. And these stainless steel screws are going through this stainless steel bracket. And you, you want to be careful. I felt one loosening up on me a little bit, which is a sign that I'm overdoing it. Just remember, it's just a little thin piece of metal and thin little threads on these. They're not very big. So you want to make sure they're snug, but you don't want to, you know, get get down on them too hard and uh, have them spin out on you. but there it is copper shield i'm just going to tighten that up okay we got ourselves a, a clean looking install we got our zip ties in 
were situated across the top without any loose wires that are gonna get pinched and be a problem. Let's get all these tools up and everything and go find ourselves a road. Here is our switch right here. See it lights up for you, kind of cool. And it's just loose right now. I can mount this, you know, I've got this much room in the vehicle with what they gave me, but I can get some wires. I would say these wires are probably just eyeballing them. Uh, 16 gauge, there's probably some of you guys out there that can tell you by looking at it. But all you gotta do is get some 16 gauge or higher wires and just butt splice onto this and you can go and put this switch anywhere you want. Now what I'm probably gonna do, I think it's a cool rocker switch, I like the little lights, uh, but I'm gonna probably just take out one of these little, you know, I made this when I bought the car because it didn't have much USB power and, and the old antiquated radio didn't play my music for my phone and so I just built this. And so I'll probably pull one of these and put a rocker switch in here that does the same thing. If you wanted to do that with your rig, you can too, but they give you one in the packaging and that's fine too. So if we look, we can see there's a spot beam in the upper right and a spot beam in down at the bottom. Starting from nothing, here are the regular daily driver low beams. And here are the high beams. And here are our new pods, if I just add them to all this. Quite a difference. Let's go back to nothing except for our pods. And off. Wow, that's a lot of light when you when you look at it like that. Total dark. Boom. And again, I can point these. You know, I may drive around a while and feel like I want to do something different with them. So let's go see if we can find a, a uh, road that I can put these on and see how it looks. Regular headlights. Night lights. Regular headlights. Night lights. Regular headlights, highlights. Now we'll go in the morning and we'll look at these pods from Nylite and we'll see if there's any moisture inside of them. I'm looking close here and I don't see any moisture from driving around in the rain. Now, if you do get moisture, there is a uh, valve right here that you open up that's copper. It's plastic on most of the competition. This one's copper. You uh, back this off and uh, even out the uh, pressure inside here and turn your lights on for a little bit and the heat from the lights will dry it on out and there's other ways you can do it too if you look online but i'm looking here let's look at the other one it looks like it's good to go so there you have it 
the Nylite 5.75 uh, off-road lights coming in about $120 right now on Amazon. They are having a Black Friday sale Nylite, so, so they've got 40% off on certain uh, items. Perfect gift for your dad, for your grandson, for your son, for your brother, for your husband. I don't know anybody that I run with that would see something like this under the tree and not get excited. So now we got something to get somebody that's got everything. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video real soon. See ya. And what you have here with Nylite in this product in particular is an entry level set of lights you can put on any vehicle to increase the amount of light that you have in any given situation. So if you're wanting to put these on your van, you're out there living the van life, uh, these things would go great with that, help find camp spots out in the dark where there's not a lot of lights. There's no lights out in the desert. I can't camp a lot.